Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? Or good afternoon, or good morning, depending on where in the world you are, um, because it's not a, a real fish. It's a virtual fish again, so we're all over the place in the nice possible way. Um, welcome to the Bonahaven Fish 2021 Virtual Masterclass. Um, I'm joined tonight by Brendan McCarran, our Master Distiller, uh, Andrew Brown, the Distillery Manager here at Bonahaven, and Julianne Fernandez, our Master Blender. Hi, everyone. How are we doing, guys? And good, Billy. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit surreal again. We're we're, we're talking to computer screens rather than to real people. Um, but what I thought we'd we'd do tonight is just sort of pass around a, a few drams, talk a little bit about fish, a little bit about Bonahaven, and then we'll have a, a wee chat about the the fish releases that we've, we've got for this year, if that suits everybody. Cover as many bases as we can, basically. <laughs> um, yeah, everybody that's watching, feel free to drop any questions that you've got, any comments or, or, or things into the, the comments section, and we'll answer as many of them as we can as we go through the session tonight. We'll probably not get to all of them, but we'll do our best. Um, we're, we're wanting to talk about mainly about the whiskies and things as well. So um, what I thought we'd start off with is come back to yourself, Brendan. Um, this isn't your first fish, but it's your first fish as part of the, the Distel family and part of Bonahaven. Um who are you and what are you doing here? <laughs> Not the first time I've heard day two questions. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I am, yeah, I am the master distiller, I guess, which has a nice ring to it. I'm the master distiller for Distel. So I work on several whiskies, including Bonahaven. Um, but prior to that, I, I've been in the whiskey industry for about 15 years. Um, recently, I've been the head of maturing whiskey stock. So I guess one of the whiskey creators for Glen Morangy and Ard Big. Uh, and prior to that, I worked for Diageo. And I guess if you look at my history, 14 of the 15 years that I've worked have been in single malt whiskey. And actually, I've got a bit of a reputation for West Coast distilling, you know. Uh, so I just I just love the West Coast and I, and I love Isla. Um, and yeah, that's that, that's that's kind of me. I've worked at Lagavulin, I've worked at Kalila, I've worked at Port Ellen, um, I've worked at Ardbeg, I've worked at Oban, and, and now... I used to supply malt to Bonahaven and Tobin Mori, um, and now now I work at Bonahaven, so kind of checking off the Isla, the Isla Massive. So that's me. I was just about to say it's name drop central here. It's like name drop. <laughs> you can go drop the mic and exit stage yeah. left. <laughs> yeah. So obviously you're familiar with Bonahaven. Have you got a, a favourite Bonahaven drum? Yeah, yeah. So it, <clears throat> it's one of the things that kind of bucks the trend for me. So usually my favourite whiskey um, of, of any distillery that I love is like the classic 10 or 12 year old whiskey but i, I do love the 12 but the bon bon having 18 is probably my, my all-time favorite and i think a bit of that is the very first time i visited bon Haven distillery the first one that andrew brown gave me and a guy called hamish that he took us on a tour of the site the first thing that we drank was some bon Haven 18 so you know context memories it's an emotional thing but above all it's just an amazing whiskey as well you know yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, this is the, the second year in the row that we've, we've entered into fish in a sort of virtual sense rather than the, the, the much more physical one that we're used to and that we, we enjoy. And the fish is a, a, a massive thing for the distilleries in the island and, and the island as a whole. What does it mean in terms of being different from normal this week on the island? Uh, what does it mean? There's no one standing on the pier on a Friday night after the festival. <laughs> There's been very few folk about. It's been very, very quiet here today. Uh, I'm not saying the island as a whole really quiet, but I mean, all these faces we see from around the world that come and visit us every year and say hello and drop in and have a wee quiet chat through the week. We're just, we're just not seeing these people. It's, it's, it's been a really, I actually think this, this year has been a really strange one because People are actually moving out, but we're still not seeing these people on the island. I think this is actually, for me, is actually stranger this year than it was last year. Because last year you just couldn't move, and you, you were expecting that this year there's folk, and we're still not seeing these people that we know. And there's Glennis and, and John that come in and see us every year. Edward and Pentoria, I seen his name pop up there a minute ago. Uh, so all these folk that we see every year and we, we, we get to chat to and spend half an hour with or 10 minutes with or five minutes and just have a quick conversation, you know, old faces and new faces that we just, we're not seeing. 
it's it's been really strange this year. I actually honestly think this is a stranger one than it was last year. For me, anyway. Possibly because we've we've had a bit longer to think about it. Last year was fairly impromptu. Well, it was. It was. So I uh, no, it's it's nice getting to see all these people. It's nice getting to spend a day, two days, a week. You know, there's a build up to it, there's the event, and then there's the, the after event. <laughs> the after event's normally just cleaning up all it. Aye. Everyone that's left about. <laughs> Careful. Me and you, Billy, we're always the last year. That's <laughs> Sometimes that includes making sure that the bottles get emptied, but never mind. It's a responsible thing to do, Andrew. Of and, course. <laughs> and Julianne, I mean, you, your role, you're, you're involved in selecting whiskies all through the year, but is there a special sort of process you go through when you're thinking about selecting bottles or casks to use in fresh bottles and special releases like these uh, that stands out from, from the normal courier job? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Bonnehaven has such a kind of loyal fan base and the people that, that drink Bonnehaven, they're so passionate about it. And what I like to do as well is kind of take their feedback every year and kind of really build on that. And it's so important to me to, to release drams that these people are going to enjoy because obviously, as Andrew said, we've got so many people that come to the distillery year in, year out. Um, and all we want is to produce whiskies that they're going to love. And not just them, but anybody who maybe it's their first fez taste something that's really, really special. So I'd say that there's definitely a lot of pressure when it comes to Fez just to get these drams absolutely spot <laughs> on, um, which yeah, it, it's it's probably the, the most difficult part of the job is knowing that you're under that pressure, but it, it's a part of the job that I absolutely love. It takes the anonymity away from the, the core range and the, 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 the things we produce in larger volume. The focus is particularly on you with these ones. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and it, it is, it's nerve wracking because obviously we've got such a kind of presence on social media. And when we start to, to do the releases and post them on social media, and I'm constantly looking at the comments and seeing what people have to say. And obviously the, the positive comments are absolutely phenomenal and we appreciate every one of them. But even the, the comments that are constructive criticism, we do take it all on board. Um, and yeah, it's lovely to hear what people think. Good. It is. It is. It's part of what we do. And I suppose going back to what Andrew said in terms of not having all the visitors here to talk to and stuff, uh, what we've been doing throughout the day, if you've been looking on the, the, the Facebook channel, is we've had little snippets of interviews with some of the guys that work here and some of the locals around the island. Um, one that caught my eye particularly was Sheena at the Gaelic College that poured out a very useful Gaelic phrase, which I'm not going to even try to replicate, but basically means, I'd like another one, please. So key things like that are, are important when you come to visit us on this thing. Right, so what uh, we're going to uh, sort of play about with tonight, we're, go we're going to start um, with hopefully some of you, not, I know not all of you, and I'm looking particularly at Mike and Russell in Canada here and Mario in the US. I know they're sitting in transit and Martin in Germany, but we'll get them to you eventually. And if I have to drag Brendan out on a Thursday night to do another tasting, we'll sort it out for you. Don't worry, guys. If you've got your little tasting kits, Get your tasting mats out and join in. If you haven't got your tasting kits just yet, pour a dram, sit back and join in with the chatter. That's what it's all about. So what I'd like to do first is just to throw this over to yourself, Brendan, um, to start us off with the, the classic Bonnehaven 12 and relation to that. This is quintessential Bonnehaven. It's all about the house style. What does that mean to you, having probably tasted it a few times, but just coming on board as part of the team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've I've tasted it more than I'm going to admit on a, a live tasting uh, with with you guys. But it is great when you when Julianne and I are lucky that you know with the, the jobs that we have, we get to we get to look at like the secret books and we get to see the recipes that no one else we will not share with. So on day one, uh, my boss Julian was saying, "Oh, we've got an induction for you here, and you'll need to do this, and you'll need to go." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'll do that." But the first hour was absolutely getting right into. Uh, the recipes and going, <laughs> I've had a theory about how these whiskies were made because I love them, but what's actually in there? But yeah, for me, um, it, I was kind of all in the ball, you know, there's always a tiny bit of surprise. But Bonnet Haven to me is, like, first of all, that distillery, and I, and I always say this, like, I, I, I've been to this, I don't know, a hundred times or goodness, but I always have a wry smile when I see that small batch distilled <laughs> on the bottle because I was like, no, it isn't. <laughs> No, it isn't. It's, it's, it's a tiny, tiny number of batches, you know. So we're only doing, you know, 
Dingle figure batches every week, unlike most distilleries who are doing 30 or 40 or whatever. But our batches are like big, you know, we have a big mash tun. We have this huge flavorful fermentation and a big fermentation vat. And our stills are these like stunning, big, you know, hunks of copper that just make amazing whiskey. And it's no surprising that the, the new make spirit that comes off those stills has got this amazing fruitiness. You know, I get cut green apple, Andrew gets pear. So we argue about that, but, you know, we argue about everything. So that's that's that, that means that I'm right. <laughs> if we both have almost the same idea about a different angle on it. But the other thing I love about Bonahaven is it is fruity, right? So it's like a fruity whiskey. And I've worked on a few fruity whiskies in my life. But it has something else. It has like a depth. It has like there's a cereal note in there. There's a little bit of oiliness. It has it has some proper body to it as well. So and again, I wasn't surprised. I didn't know this until I came on board and Andrew talked me through it. But again, when you think of like cult whiskies, when you talk about those, you know, real superstar single malt scotches, there's a, there's an uncanny parallel or an uncanny coincidence that a lot of them have a spring. You have hard mineral rich water that supply them and Bonahaven is one of those so it's kind of you get this amazing fruity and floral and cereal and deep uh, spirit which absolutely suits maturation and sherry so it's just it's just a brilliant 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 style of whiskey for me and then also I always love a paradox and I also I always love people who just you know go somewhere that does something amazingly and do it a little bit different so it'd be on Isla you know the island of smoke and to do something that is just so world class and doesn't have any smoke in it, I just love that. I love that <laughs> thing, and that's why I love the twelve and I love the eighteen so much. Well, the yeah. twelve is the first wee dram in the tasting kit. Um, so if you've got the tasting kit, pour a wee dram, and we'll, we'll talk through this. If you haven't, pour a dram anyway and, and pretend because that's what it's about. Brendan, take it, take us through the, the tasting of this one for us from your perspective. Yeah, so, so, so for the geeks in the audience, and I've been looking at all the comments coming in, and there's lots of geeks here. There's lots, <laughs> lots of geeks. A lot of familiar faces as well, so hello to everyone. A lot of Canadians too. So well done, Mike, our ambassador out there in Canada. You have like, done an amazing job bringing people in here. But for the geeks amongst us, you know, it's all natural colour. It's, it's, it's unchill filtered. It's as, it's, as, it's as pure as it comes. It's as uninterrupted, uninterfered with as you can get. And it is, you know, big on sherry. You get that amazing colour that comes from using a lot of Oloroso, a lot of really good sherry casks. On the nose, I, I get that. You know, you, you get the distillery character and you get the wood character. So lots of dried fruits, lots of sultanas, lots of raisins, lots of almost like orange peels that have been kind of left out to dehydrate. So everything intensifies. But you do get, you get that kind of, you get that green apple, that pear, maybe a little bit of citrus. And then on the taste, again, the sort of classic sherry notes start coming through, a bit of chocolate, a little bit of spice, not quite chilli, I wouldn't say, you know, but you get that kind of cracked black pepper. And do you know what? Even just, just above everyone else, it just tastes like amazing whiskey. You know, it just has all these really familiar notes to it. It has roundness, it has strength, it has depth. It's just... I always, whenever I think of Bonahaven, I just think of big, you know, it's just, it's a big, flavourful whiskey. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Julianne, Andrew, do you get anything else that, I know uh, he, he said that he argues with you all the time, Andrew, you must have a different outtake on this one. No, actually, I don't. Uh, I, I, I don't get a chance. <laughs> don't get wrong here. That was just throwing me right under the bus there, Andrew. Cheers. That's all right. <laughs> I get I get more of the cinnamon uh, spices coming through. Bon Arm has always got that wee spicy you note know, in the back of just about everything we do. Apart from that, I, I, I mean, I, it's, it's kind of hard to disagree with them and everything else. Again, I get the rich fruits. I do get the rich fruits. I get the light, lovely. Um, I'm not going to say I'm getting the nutty flavours, but I do get the sweetness and that caramel on it. I just think Bon Arm is it's a classic. As I used to say, I started off working here many years ago and done tours before before we had a visitor centre probably. It was just a wee cabinet up on the wall that you could come in, you could buy some things that are not PC anymore, like an ashtray, a, a mat for the bar, and you could buy, buy Bonahaven at any age you wanted in any size bottle, as long as it's a 12-year-old and the bottle size was 70 cm. And that was what you could get. And that was your taste. And then we started doing... doing uh, 
I think Brendan pinched my face earlier on. He pinched my 18-year-old. That's my favourite too. And that's why he was given the 18-year-old the first time he came around the distillery. <laughs> this is my favourite. Have a drama. Julianne? It, no, I completely agree with what Brendan said. For me, a lot of it, as he mentioned, obviously it's unchill filtered, and that's what I love about Bunna Haven is it's that beautiful mouth coating that you get. As Brendan said, there's a little bit of oiliness to Bunna Haven as well, um, and then you make spirit, and that really does carry through right into the the mature dram. And that mouth coating that you get, it just means that all the flavours like it, it lasts for ages. It, it's got so much depth and complexity. It's it's just rich and beautiful. And to me, kind of as Andrew said. I get more kind of cinnamon and nutmeg spice coming through. It almost kind of reminds me a little bit of kind of Christmas pudding. That's sometimes what Bonna Haven reminds me of is kind of wintertime Christmas pudding, that kind of spice and the, the dried fruit and things like that. But it, it is, it's an absolutely phenomenal jam. Well, there we go, folks. The first time ever, all three agree. <laughs> at the end of the world. I'm so. going to throw a spanner on the works because I get that really caramel flavour at the end, but chocolatey. And yeah, I'm old enough to remember, remember the, the, the wee sweeties you used to get called Curly Whirlies. That's a chocolatey caramel flavour comes through at the back for me, but it's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Um, Matthew was asked a question. Curly Whirlies are still about. It's just they're, they're this size. They're much smaller they're now. Right? It's a bit like yeah. wagon wheels, That's isn't it? The difference. <laughs> um, Mario was asked a question, Brendan, for the first hundred days on, on your list, what sort of some plans or, or thoughts have you got from, from your first wee while here that you, you're happy to share with us? And if you don't want to share with us, just go, can't tell you. No, 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 no. So, so usually it would be that kind of answer. And, you know, you'd, uh, I, 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 I have a small ego, but I'm not egotistical and arrogant enough to say I'm going to, you know, make Bonner have in super smoky and only mature it in bourbon casks or something like that. Um, but I will reveal one thing. I, I'm going to be... I want us to be a little bit more selfish about Bonahaven because it is desired the world over and it's desired by every single master blender in Scotland. And of course it is because it's amazing and it's distinctive as well. So we do make some for people who want to make great blended scotches that aren't ours. And we'll still, we'll still do that, but I want to be a wee bit more selfish and I want to keep more for us and I want more, more of it to be master blendered by if such a word exists um by julianne rather than other master blenders around scotland so that's that's my big plan and i'm already working on it andrew and i have been working really hard to work out how we can guarantee the quality and that's great there is just the quality of, of all our distilleries is incredible but we want to guarantee the quality make some more and keep some more so that's that's the grand plan that is the grand plan you know bonner having is it is just a truly awesome whiskey. It's the one that most people have been excited about since I announced I was moving. It's the one that people have mentioned the most. And I just I just think more people deserve to be able to get their hands on it. So that's my that's my grand plan so far. <laughs> Excellent. All good news. All good news. Right. Um, I'm just conscious of the fact that um, looking at some of the comments coming through, we're really going to have to arrange a technical tasting one night to, to deal with some of these questions. We won't delve into them too far tonight because it's, it's a much more general tasting tonight and we've got so many great things to talk about. Um, keeping an eye on the time, I think we're now going to hand over to Andrew to look at the second dram in the tasting pack tonight. You sure? Aye, nah, go for it. Can I just say, I see Glenis and Reagan on there, and she's at, she's saying hello to me, new Billy. Uh, I take it Glenis has been her traditional self and has been late again because she asked if we were missing it. We did give you a shout out earlier on, Glenis. But <laughs> you, you, as, as I know, you were perfectly well. You're always late to every tasting class you go to, so you're probably late to this one too. Yeah. She also <laughs> said, We love you, Andrew and Billy. So, Glenis, on behalf of Juliana and myself, out. <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> She was on time for the warehouse tasting earlier, so there, there is a precedent being broken, Andrew. Oh, is there? Aye, aye. So, I'm doing Dram 2 tonight, which is... I don't, know if this, I don't know if this is going to show up on camera, but it is the first year 2021 Osala Cast Finish 2001. It doesn't work well in this, in this warehouse, in this warehouse, this office. Hey, so what have we got here? We've got a Marsala, Marsala finished cask. So it was laid down into the Marsala cask in the 7th of June 2016. So it spent four and a half years roughly 
uh, sitting in Marsala butts finishing. Uh, it was distilled originally all in October 2001, so it's not quite the 20 years, so it's a 19 year old uh, whiskey, and it's got a lovely colour, I don't know if you can actually see that, my light is not the best in this office, but yep. again, that's one thing about living in Bonahaven, the internet connection here, if I was sitting at home, I'd be a frozen picture since now, so I have to come down to the office where I can get a wee bit better uh, fibre connection, and I think I'm still in dial up in the house. Uh, so, come back to the, the whiskey. Oh, it's got a lovely dried fruit. Morello cherries. It's got some hint licorice in there and tobacco and a wee bit of red grapes. I have a good taste of it sitting down. Um, but it's, eh, be quiet, Julianne. <laughs> 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 on the palate hmm that is lovely it's really sweet but it's got a wee bit of dryness in the end of it I get rich dark I get plums nectarines coming through vanilla want to have spice come through it's got a bit of cloves in it and it's got it's quite a dry finish. It's it's a wee bit there. Tobacco, leather. And my, my the bit I always get in Bonner Haven, I always look for it, I always find it. It's got a spice of some kind. It can yeah. be the cinnamon, it can be the ginger. And this one, it's just a wee bit more sedate. It, it's, it's mellowed out a wee bit, but it's still there. And it's one of the finishing tastes I get. And it's always something I find in Bonner Haven. Let's go over to Juliana and see what she decides on this lovely dram. I will say Marsala and Bonahaven is one of my favourite finishes. Yeah, I no, really like it. Completely agree with you, Andrew. I think that I think this is a lovely dram. Um, I think obviously we talk quite a lot about finishing our whiskies and just getting the finishing time just right. What we don't want to do is obviously mask the wonderful um, flavours and characteristics of the the Bonahaven. Um, new make spirit as we know it so all we want to do is put it in a cast that's going to kind of complement that and bring out some of the notes so as you said in this you're still getting a lot of the typical Bonahaban notes that are present you're getting the kind of roasted nuts that I think are quite um, typical of Bonahaban and that beautiful spice kind of cinnamon cloves coming through like you say I think it, it's an absolutely beautiful dram. Obviously, it, it's up there at cask strength I mean I've not got a bottle in front of me but I think it's roughly it's a 53 and a half or something um, You're point so, one out. Uh, Fifty three point six. I've got a good memory. Come um, on, Julianne, that's not good enough. <laughs> poor show. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like even at cask strength, what I love about this is that it, it really packs a punch, but you don't get that kind of alcohol burn. What you're getting is really beautiful notes um, that you talk to through the kind of stone fruits and stuff. And what's lovely is if you add a drop of water, it really does kind of open it up and and change it a little bit. Um, and it changes kind of some of the flavours and the, and the characteristics of this jam, which I think is wonderful. Brendan, I can see you've just added some water, so I'm sure you'll give us your views on this one. Yeah, so uh, first of all, I just, I love it. You know, I love it. Um, well done. Like, amazing, amazing whiskey. Mm -hmm. And I know how hard, uh, from past experience, I know how inconsistent Marsala casts can be, you know, so it's all about catching them at the right time. And this one has been caught, you know, absolutely perfectly. It's just, I get I get the licorice all over. So it's licorice and it's um, not the most translatable um, tasting note, but like treacle toffee is another one I get. But I also get a lot of fruits, but it's kind of like, it's like red fruits and dark fruits, like black currants, cherries, raspberries, but all of it's been kind of like boiled down, baked down into like a jam. So there's this really sticky, sweet, jammy fruitiness to it. Um, I it's just it's just amazing. I'm not a huge fan of uh, cash strength whiskies in that I don't really like drinking them at cash strength. But that one, I was sipping away it and sipping away. It has like real, I don't know, structure, whatever the right word is. It has like a it's together, it's integrated. But yeah, once that water's went in there, I think it's just, I think it's just, it's, it's it was an amazing whiskey, and now it's just doubly good. So uh, it's it's fantastic. Uh, Dwayne Miller's just posted a comment there going, it's oily, it's beautiful, and the nose, it's sweet and spicy. But for me, see, when you add the couple of drops of water to it, 
it really softens up and you get much more floral notes coming through from it. I mean, even to daft as daffodils and roses and stuff, that's a light ethereal quality coming through in the nose with, with water in it. Whereas before, with it at full strength, it's a lot heavier and you're getting a lot of those much thicker notes in the nose. It's nice having that option to add the water, though, and I think for me, that's what's nice about our releases being at cask strength is that we're giving the people who are buying these bottles the option. If you like to sip it at cask strength, that's fine. If you want to add a, a block of ice, a few drops of water, whatever it is, um, to open it up and enjoy it how you like, then that really makes a difference to me. Yeah, totally agree. How, how is it with ice? Have you tried it with ice? It must be amazing. Like, you know, some ice in this, I'd imagine it would be spectacular. Yeah, I've only tried it with ice once actually, and it was when I was I was doing the tasting notes. Um, and yeah, it is. It's it's different, and I think that as well. And I'm not just talking about Bun I have in here, but with a lot of whiskies, what I love about them is they change depending on kind of the weather outside, the mood you're in. Like tasting notes are so subjective, and what you get one night having a dram, it can change like a week later if you're drinking in your back garden and the sun's out, which I know isn't very often in Scotland, but. <laughs> It, that's, what, <laughs> that's what I absolutely love about it. So, like you say, in a nice hot sunny day, a wee ice cube in that completely changes it. Um, mm. which I I just think it's brilliant. There's a lot of comments coming through. Please keep them coming, keep your, your, your thoughts coming through, guys. But there's a lot focusing on the cherries and the black forest gato type notes coming through. From from your point of view in terms of picking these casks, if you if you're looking at something like a Marsala, a Marsala is quite a, a complex wine. What are you looking for in that cask that you're going to say is going to complement the spirit but not overwhelm it in that sense? So, so like you say, these notes that you're talking about there with the kind of black cherry, the dark fruits, things like that, to me, Bunna Haven already has kind of notes of creamy berries, um, things like that that start to come through. So for me, the Marsala cask really kind of pulls that out because you get it in some drams, but you don't get it in all of them. Whereas when we've put it in this Marsala cask, we're really kind of pulling out those those dark fruits, the the cherries. Um, and yeah, it, it just really brings out some of the, the notes that are more subtle in Bunna Haven, but are actually present in the New Make Spirit. And we were talking before, Brendan and Andrew, about New Make Spirit, the New Make Spirit itself. It's, it's, it's not like other New Make Spirits. I, I know everyone's different, but it's a very sweet, very light, very floral quality to it, but it's still got a huge amount of depth there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. It's just big, you know, it's, it's for, for want of a better word, it's just a big new make spirit. I'd say it's, if you have to put a one word descriptor on it, I, I get it as fruity, um, but it's fruity, it's cereal, it's, it's got light touches to it, it's got top notes, but it just has this body to it as well, which is why it works so great in sherry casks, which is why it works great in a, a Marsala finish. Yeah, it's just it's just a very special whiskey. Yeah, definitely, uh, the new make spirits, as, as Brendan says, it's, uh, it's pretty floral. Uh, I always tend to find that uh, it gives me go back to my pear drops. It's something that I always look yeah, for in yeah. Bon Avenue. It's, 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 it's something it's apples. It's, it's apples. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I get green apples in the uh, in the wash actually at a certain stage. <laughs> <laughs> Talk, talking about the wash, Gary Mills has asked a question in terms of the fermentation. How long do we run the fermentation for at Bon Avenue? Okay, right. That de that depends on how many mashes we do, because we do. If we're doing nine, it runs to 110 hours. We have uh, five longs, four shorts, which go to 56. Ten is now we're currently running between 56 and 92 hours, and uh, going forward, it's probably going to be closer to 52 hours. Uh, Brendan has big plans and has big changes coming afoot. So later on in the year. The fermentation won't drop though. The average fermentation time will stay the same. The same. Oh, you know? I, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, historically, once a uh, bon Haven, and probably maybe some of this, maybe if it's a wee bit older, fermentation time was a maximum of sixty-three hours at one stage, and then I had to go to the stalls, and that yeah. changed. But the new mix spirit didn't. It always stayed consistent, and it was something that was tried. It's like everyone else, you know. We don't always tell Julianne we're going to do changes at the end of the story. <laughs> but we send, we send her the new mate spirit and we'll let her grade it. And if she picks anything up that we've changed, then we can reflect on that. So, you know, that's 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 the beauty of someone that's so 
good at having the nose and the blending skills to say, I oh yeah, and something a wee bit different here. What have he's done something? So <laughs> it's always something that, that, that we do. Don't always tell Brendan either. Yeah, well, in your toes, Julianne. <laughs> I, I, exactly, Billy, put me on the spot. But it is something, you know, we, we've done it a few times where we've done changes and, you know, if we, if we do a change and, and we tell you, you'll look for the change. Absolutely, absolutely, as, yeah, if we as don't Andrew said, you, do it blind. Aye, then, then if you pick up something that's different, then we can re revert back and say, no, we've done that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't be dropping the fermentation thing, though. No, 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 no <laughs> we keep the average. The average is the same, but it is, you know, when you have the wooden washbacks and that spring water, the fermentation just creates so much flavour. You know, we'll never, we'll never lose that. Never lose that. Okay, um, guys, keep the questions coming in. Let's say we'll do our best to answer them as we we go through uh, the the rest of the tasting. Um, I've got a shout out for Phil Walker and the guys at the Union Bar, the Union Hotel in Cumbria. Um, they've been watching us on the big screen out in the beer garden. So, hi guys, how are we doing? And I think we're looking at the, the time. It's time to move on to drum number three. Can I just give a, a scene earlier on? Can I give a shout to the to the gentleman that signed in from Tokyo when it's 4 a.m. and he's having a dram to stay awake? I just think <laughs> he's a, a certain shout out for that. Dedication, that's what we like to see, dedication. That's, yeah, that's what I said at the start, it's either good evening, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where we are, because you look at some of the, 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 the comments coming through, we've got Tokyo, we've got South Africa, we've got Finland, we've got all over the US and Canada, and again, we've got thanks to, to Mike and Russell at New Whiskey Order for, for the Canadian in input, um, and I'm still not talking to, to Russell, uh, he made me open one of my favourite bottlings, it's the only bottle I've got left and I'm not happy about that. Anyway, <laughs> um, right, we're going to move on. Uh, Glynis has said, what's the rush? Because uh, the, the broadcast ends at nine o'clock, Glynis, and me trying to keep these three from talking too long is, a, is like herding cats. Um, <laughs> so we're going to move on to the next tram, and this is a very difficult one for me to talk about. It's a Monia Bordeaux finish. Now, the Monia Bordeaux for me is, well, I say it's a challenge because the only red wine I like is not Bordeaux. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to uh, expand my palate a wee bit and, and broaden out um, and look at this. And for me, a, a peated Bonahaven is a very different animal to any other peated whiskey I've ever tried. And in that way, for me, it's already complex before I even look at it. But I guess we, we can't really do a tasting on Isla without harkening over to the dark side, because Isla is the, the land of the peat monsters. Um, before we, we get into the dram, per se, this, I suppose, harkens back to the, the, the pre-60s Bonahaven in terms of peated whiskey production and stuff like this. And it's a, it's a, a much smaller part of our, our repertoire these days. But to me, Peated whiskey is intrinsic to Isla. What's your take on a, a Monia Bonahaven in relation to all the other Isla peated animals that are out there? To me, it, it, it stacks up with the best of them, but how, how is it slightly different? What makes it unique to Bonahaven? Dead silence, asking? that's what I like. Nobody. Who are you asking? <laughs> all three of you, what do you think? Go for it. Who's, who's got the most to say? I'll go first then. Um, for me, what's special about Monia is, as you've said, kind of Isla's the home of the kind of peat monsters and and people are expecting a huge kind of hit of smoke. I don't get that in Monia. What I get is a kind of beautiful kind of light. It's not. It's a kind of perfect balance between that kind of medicinal smoky notes that you get and a beautiful kind of sweet peat that comes through as well so for me it's it's not overpowering it's not in your face and um, what I like about Monia is when I talk about it I say that it's a peated whiskey that could be for anyone in their whiskey journey so if you're starting off on peated whiskies Monia is a beautiful whiskey to, to start as an introduction because it's not going to smack you in the face with peat but at the same time the peat's there you're not losing that peat you know that it's there and um, and yeah, Monia is really, really special because it it holds its own without being overpowering, and that's exactly how I would describe it. But I don't know if Brendan or Andrew would agree with that. I just, I just love the, I love the idea of having a flex. You know, we make this unbelievable Isla whiskey that's non-peated, 
but then just every so often, so there's these people who make great whiskey, you know, Lafroy, Glagavillan and Ardbeg are amongst my favourite whiskies on earth. Um, but I don't think any of them would dare and try and make a Bonahaven style Isla whiskey. They wouldn't try and make a, a non-peated or when they have, and that's a come on if any of are here right now, try it. Um, but Whenever they have made it, it hasn't been that successful, you might say. So we make this incredible non-peated style of whiskey. And then just every so often, just because we can, we give it a go and we make just spectacular, heavily peated, spectacular, big and smoky um, whiskey. And I love it. Um, I prefer unpeated Bonahaven. I think I love that kind of uh, parallel that we, we have against every other Iowa distillery, really, or, or most other Iowa distilleries. But I just love the way we make Monya, and it's just, it's got that amazing peatiness. I agree, it's got that amazing sweet peatiness. It's got less of the seaweed and less of the iodine, but more of that kind of charred wood and distant bonfires and just sweet smoke as well. Bacon, stuff like that. Someone else got bacon. Hey, for me, I, I, I think it harks back to what probably one to have and did before, before it became an, an unpeated monster. So... When I started back here, we actually had some of the original 1963 casts that had uh, was made using malt that was actually produced at Bonahaman. So there was only nine that were put into casks. Uh, they were first full sherry casks. They lay in one of the warehouses and they came out back in 2003 as the very as one of the very first festival boltmans. So it came out as a 40-year-old, probably one of the first 40-year-olds that came out. So the Monia hearts back to that style of Bonahab, you know, when it had its kilns, when it made its own on on printed malt. So it hearts back to that. And even that, if if you're lucky enough to get a bottle of that, okay, it was 40-year-olds that probably lost some of its smoke, but it was a more gentle style. I don't think it had the medicinal qualities that you get with some of the other distilleries uh, on Isla. Whereas Ours is that wee bit. I always tend to find it sweeter. And I've got to say, up until a few years ago, I was not a huge Peter fan. Uh, I got converted by a Amonia seven-year-old uh, Ola Rosa cast that we had in Warehouse 7. That I just thought was an absolutely stunning whiskey. And I um, I didn't drink gallons of it, but it was pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> You know, every so often there was a wee, you can only buy it in, in 200 mils, so every so often it was in the shop, I haven't had a bottle of that, just to make sure I do like this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's to me, and I, and I like, I like that we make two different styles of whiskey, and they're both classic in their own right, they're not, you can see the Bonahaven in the Moynia, and it comes through on both sides, it's always got that wee sweet touch, and you always still find that, that wee bit of spice in it. That's without going to the dram. Oh, really? We'll go to the dram now then. Yes. Hi. Well, this is a, a 2013 Monia Bordeaux. It's 59.5% ABV. It doesn't come across like that on the nose. It's not sharp. It's not acidic in any way. It's beautifully soft. Lots of red fruits. And as Brendan alluded to earlier, it's like stewed red fruits that have thickened up and almost become like a, a preserve. It's, it, it's, there's a thickness to it on the nose. Hint of dry smoking black currants for me there. And on the palate. First thing that gets you is that sweetness. It's a beautifully sweet dram. Very complex, lots of things going on in the mouth. Not a huge explosion happening. It's a gentle burn, a slow burner happening there. And for me, you definitely got the grapes. You're definitely getting that sort of, I've scribbled some, some notes down here. Dark cherries, coffee and licorice coming through. But at the end, it starts to get a little bit drier, a little bit spicier. You get some of the tannins and a wee bit of mustiness, possibly from the grapes, possibly from the, the cast of the wood. But it's got a beautifully dry, rich finish to it. And I might be converted from Malbec to Bordeaux. We'll see how we go. I was going to ask, I was going to say, if you don't like Bordeaux, because I love Bordeaux, not that I can afford it, but I do <laughs> love it. I was going to say, no. what's your favourite? So it's Malbec. Malbec. Malbec, yeah. What do so you guys get? Malbec. Um, no, completely agree with what you're saying, Billy. That kind of 
lingering dryness in the spice to me i get almost like a kind of touch of a red chili it's almost like a because it's so sweet though it's like a um, kind of chili chocolate almost that i'm getting coming through a uh, beautifully balanced and as you said it's almost like kind of black currant jam and stuff it's quite thick kind of coats the mouth i think it's really kind of full bodied um a lot of depth but without being overpowering it doesn't kind of smack you in the face and what i kind of love about a lot of the the whiskies that we do when we're using all these different cast types what i love is that you get kind of all the different flavors at all the different times so you get the kind of typical bonahaven notes but then you get the cask influence and although you get them all in separate layers, they're so well integrated. And, and that, to me, is just really special about Bonner having. Definitely. No, I, like, I love the way it's two big casks. You know, it's, it's two big sort of flavours or two big styles. So smoky Bonner having, Moigna style Bonner having, which is, which is a big whiskey, and then Bordeaux wine. You know, that, that can be a challenging cask. That can dominate and... Um, yeah, just just absolutely knock, knock, knock the spirit character out of a whiskey if you're not careful. So it's 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 two huge flavors, but you've managed to get the two of them to like harmonize rather than fight, and it's just the the end result spectacular. I love that sweetness. I love that kind of uh, it doesn't make any sense, but chewy lever book kind of thing that's going on, and then sweet tobacco. I I it's, I'm a smoky fan, so. Andrew, you're a late convert. I've, I've loved smoky since I started drinking whiskey, and it's just a great smoky whiskey. Eh, hey, maybe. <laughs> I have some favourites in there now that I, I de definitely uh, peated. For me, I get, um, I'm get. i going to go back to the childhood. I, mean, I get cola cubes on the nose. I get the cola cubes. And I, I, I picked that picked up before. I put a wee drop of water in it there, mm -hmm. and just took it down a bit, and I actually think the spiciness became even more intense. I think it opened up and that spicy note for for Bonne Haven. It's more of a gin it's more like a ginger now that's just it's just sitting on the tongue. Yeah. Uh, uh, we've we've had a red wine before and I, I like this one. I think this is a cracking drama. It's a great marriage between the two styles as Brendan was saying, when you've got the 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 Bordeaux and the peated and they just seem to work together. It's it's yes, yeah, it's, it's a cracking cracking whiskey. Really I mean, nice. I just I just wish I had a barbecue right now because, you know, it would no, go great with barbecue and also it would mean that the sun was shining, which it never does in Scotland. But for <laughs> two reasons, it is just barbecued meat and all sorts of stuff. Just looking uh, through the comments, we've got Zahara, we've got David, we've got Dave Manson, all saying smoked meats or smoky, yeah. smoke cooked stuff, preserved, things like that, going through to sweetness. So there, there is that definite theme coming through there. It's For me, that that's a really... It's a sit down and take your time with and, and sort of just immerse yourself in kind of dram. It's not one that you're just going to sit and take. You, you can build on that for ages. It's a, a very yeah. complex dram. Someone says uh, not cola cubes. Sorry, coming, guys. Sorry? Someone said not cola cubes, more sarsaparilla. <laughs> Frazzles dipped in grange jam. There we go. <laughs> There's a very Scottish <laughs> tasting, though. <laughs> uh, someone's also added it's always sunny in Falkirk. <laughs> Cliff man. <laughs> Carol Glenn just kept it simple and he went wonderful. So that's that's typical. Jordy, short and to the point. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, the comments, keep them coming in, guys. Um, I've had a, a request from Ben on the Facial Committee. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I've just seen a comment come in from Island Taxis. If anyone's been to Island, they'll get this one. That if you went with a blow with a blow down, that's when the, the smoke gets blown back into the, the pub. Into the pub. <laughs> that, that, that's the best one tonight. Uh, Julianne, someone else is asking what, what type of Bordeaux wine, red, white, or sauterne. So I'm assuming it's a it's a red Bordeaux. Yeah, red, red Bordeaux, yep. Yeah. Right, okay, we'll go back to the questions. I mean, the, the Fish Committee have asked us for a wee plug here. Um, they're running a competition from their website and from their Facebook page where they're running a raffle for every single Fish release for this year. There's a limited number of tickets. They're 25 quid each. The draw will be done on Saturday night after the final fling. And, yeah, that's a plug right enough, Brendan. Thank you, just in case we didn't know. <laughs> Um, so they're asking everybody if you, I don't interrupt Billy said the fish committee. Let them talk. Yes, 
Um, basically, go on over to their website or their Facebook page, click on the link, and they're effectively looking at thousands of pounds worth of whiskey. There's one raffle ticket winner. That's it. Winner gets everything. So bounce over there. It's all the money's going to the Fish Committee for charitable causes. So you're in with a shout. Go for it. Um, yeah. So Fish, again, a bit virtual. We're all getting a little bit... Um, either more comfortable or jaded with Zoom calls and things like this. But for for us, I think it's a, it's a really good way of keeping in touch with people in a, in a, a, an event like this where you see so many people throwing in comments and doing shout outs to folk. It does help to try and bring everybody together when we're so far apart at the moment. Are you How, how are you guys dealing with, with all the, the calls and, and talking to people from a distance? Oh, well, Julianne, well, yeah, you've been for a wee while, Julianne. You can talk first because you've got more experience of it. Yeah, I so it is difficult, obviously, speaking to people from kind of all over the place and not having that interac interaction. Um, even speaking to like a, a few of our sales team and other people who are doing tastings just now, there's times where you'll say something, you think you're dead funny, and then you realise you're laughing at yourself because obviously there's no interaction coming back. I, and there's a few times I've caught myself and I think, God, you must look like a right idiot because nobody's laughing except you. Um, so yeah, there. But I, I suppose yeah, it's different. I most definitely prefer seeing people face to face and interacting with people. Um, I think you can then gauge their reaction, and I love hearing like all their kind of feedback and comments face to face. It is difficult doing it online, but at least we're able to do this, and at least we're we're all able to gather here tonight and taste these amazing drams. And yep. whiskey buying and whiskey drinking is a is, is such a, a communal process. It's 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 something you do with friends and family, and and you sit and have a a, a conversation with it. I mean. Brenda and Andrew, you've done hundreds of tastings in, in your days. It, it, it's very different to do things like this and, and do it comfortably. Very much. Very much. <laughs> so, yeah, I wouldn't say I've done hundreds of them, but yes, it's a completely different experience. Uh, sitting here and you, you, you don't have the, the interaction with the people, the folks sitting there to, giving you the feedback and some strange flavouring that they've, they've found in the back of a, a whiskey you going, that you've never heard of, but I, I can see it coming down the side. So I, the actual interaction that we we're seeing this script coming down the side is actually quite good. You're seeing all these comments coming in, Brendan. Yeah, I guess I guess I've been I've been surprised by how well it's worked. You know, I guess at the start of the pandemic, so the start of the pandemic, I was in New Zealand um, doing um, drum fest, and I was doing I did my last big tasting in New Zealand, and then Melbourne uh, in Australia, and then flew home. And, you know, that was great. So you're in the room with people and you're chatting to them. You're getting like that sort of input and really realising what people are loving and getting a debate for the more controversial drums. And then when I got home, I thought, oh, well, that's that's the end of that then. Like, there's no way we'll be able to make this work. But I, th I think the I think Zoom tastings and StreamYard tastings and just online tastings have actually worked. They've worked really well. I don't think they'll be... 100% as good as the time you're in the room with someone you can see that first time someone switches on to one of your whiskies. But they, they do work for me. And it is quite cool to do, a, let's say, a, a live tasting with New Zealand and then you know walk out this door here that takes me back into my kitchen and I'm home <laughs> rather than jump onto a plane and fly for 32 hours to get home. So I don't know. I, I, think, I think these kind of tastings are here to stay. I think they're here and I think they're great for certain things, but I do think there is certain times where there's nothing more magical than seeing people at the distillery and just being able to, you know, that, that especially that first time someone switches on to your whiskey is really, really cool. But these kind of Zoom tastings where you've got, I mean, the, the comments coming down the side of people being super experienced is, is amazing. So these kind of ones work. And then the last one I'd say is uh, MG, MG McInnes called me out for no dad jokes. Like, forget it. No chance <laughs> there yet today. I like, I like the one that Kathleen put up saying, uh, Julianne, you've got the best hair. Oh, thanks. <laughs> okay, well, Julianne, I'm going to hand over to you now. Hardly brushed. Um, but yeah, <laughs> anyway, over to me. Is that what you said? Yes, over to you now. So, Billy, are you wanting to, to talk about first? Have I just totally interrupted where you were going with that? No? No, I was basically performing a little montage and a link talking about your hair and then handing the whole thing over to you. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, thank, thanks for the nice comments about about my hair. Um, but back back to whiskey. So yeah, as a lot of you all know, um, when we do fez every year, what we like to do is kind of keep a very special drama a secret for as long as we can, and then release it on the day. Um, so I've got the pleasure today of releasing our um, special fez yield release, which is a uh, nineteen eighty six. Now, in true Bonahaven fashion, we've given it a, a lovely special name, which I am not even going to try and pronounce. Maybe if I was about five, six drams into this, I might have tried, but I'm going to get Billy just to pronounce it for us here. Uh, Sarah Ferguson, our lead guide here, um, as a Gaelic speaker, as I was Leah, the other lead guide, and they beat me up yesterday to get my pronunciation almost bearable. It's Trichet Sikea. So, and Gaelic I think that just means 34. Work. Yeah, that's does, right. Yeah. So I do have our beautiful, I don't know if you can see the bottle. Um, I've taken the bottle out of our wonderful box. Let me just grab it. So again, as you know, Bonahaven does our does packaging very, very well. And I know the packaging isn't as important as the, the wonderful whiskey that's in the bottle, but the the packaging of this one is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, and it makes it kind of even more exciting to to get the the bottle and open it and have a dram so as i said this is um a 1986 um release from bunnahaven it's 48.8 percent so obviously the, the strength's a little bit lower just with the age of it as brendan mentioned before like everything else we do it's unchill filtered it's natural color um and it's just yeah it's a it's a really really special whiskey so it was distilled uh, in october 1986 and it was matured in oak casks so it was basically a a refill um sherry cask but the sherry it was kind of like third fourth fill um and we don't talk about that all that often and um, when we do tastings and the reason for that is a lot of you are kind of whiskey connoisseurs some might refer to yourself as kind of whiskey geeks and and boffins and whatever else it may be and there's sometimes a little bit of snobbery around using refill casks but what's so special about this dram is that you've heard us all night talking about the wonderful flavors of Bunnahaven, the new make spirit and um, how it's got so much depth it's got the the apples and the pears in there so that i'm not upsetting anybody and um, it's got your kind of uh, roasted nuts there's so much going on in it so what's nice about using a cask that's not just it's not just held cherry or just held something else is that it really showcases bunnahaven for what it is um so as i said it's 34 years old and it was matured on the island for its full life which again makes it really really special gives it that beautiful kind of salty influence and you get a beautiful kind of salty undercurrent coming through um which i'll go through as we have a little taste of it um, so we only have 249 bottles of this. So it is really, really special, really, really limited. Um, beautiful chestnut gold colour. And on the nose, it's when we were doing the tasting notes for this, what I quite like to do is, as I said, tasting notes are so subjective and what I get isn't going to be the same as what anybody else gets, which is absolutely fine. And that's why I love hearing other people's opinions. So there was a few of us doing the tasting notes together um, and having a look at this dram. And we were talking about how whiskey is so special and it can take you somewhere rather than just be a, a kind of a note that you get coming through. So when we were doing this one, a lot of kind of fresh strawberries were starting to come through. We were talking about rain drenched strawberries. And somebody was saying that it really reminded them of when they used to go like strawberry picking as a child. And that, to me, I just found that really, really special that, that a whiskey could take somebody to that place and kind of bring back that memory. So anyway, on the nose, a lot of kind of fresh strawberries, um, rain drenched strawberries, as I mentioned, that beautiful candied orange peel. I think Brendan touched on that before. It's almost like oranges that have been left out to dehydrate. So they get like that really kind of strong flavour. Dark sugars, demerara sugar coming through beautiful nuts and then the oak is really present in this one with it obviously being aged in the cast for 34 years you do get the beautiful kind of oak spice coming through the lovely woody notes the palette on this one is just beautiful there's almost tropical fruits coming through bananas pineapple coconut andrew brown's favorite foam bananas really starting to come through sweet i got the nose did you get it good for you um again the wood spice coming through kind of roasted nuts 
and such a long dry finish but it, as much as the finish is dry there there's kind of vanilla and chestnut starting to come through at the back so again it's just so complex so rich and just a, a really wonderful jam i'm going to jump in here for a minute uh, julianne before andrew and um, brendan get a chance to say anything because i'm really worried about the time uh, it's four minutes to go and there's a number of things we need to put out here tonight this bottle is limited to 249 bottlings only and as of nine o'clock tonight they're going on sale on their website uh, info at uh, um it's limited to one per person so fire on and if you get lucky that's great um there's also if you don't manage to get one on the website there's a competition being run on our facebook page um the little quiz and the first prize on it is a bottle of this so one bottle has been held back as a prize for the competition so please if you don't get successful and even if you do jump onto the facebook page and join in the, the competition for it um it's Probably one of the, the, the best bun of I've tasted. I think this is a fantastic whiskey. For me, on the nose and on the palate, I'm getting fresh avocados coming through on it. We've got a couple of minutes left. So, Andrew and Brendan, a final comment on this bottling before we get cut off? Yeah, I'll be spectacularly quick. It's spectacular whiskey. It's just it's just amazing. Just a fantastic, fantastic demonstration of bun of So, cheers. Uh, for me, I got... Uh, when I when I started nosing it, I got my tropical and I got my bananas. I got the tropical notes, but I got it on the nose right away. I also get it in the taste, and again, it's an absolute gorgeous whiskey. I, I need to tell the father-in-law that he actually did something good when, when he walked here. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's quite a few comments coming through, Billy. When, when is it on sale, and how much does it cost? There, there Nine o'clock tonight after the tasting, and it's seven hundred and fifty pounds, and you're limited so, to one per person. That's so a bargain. Sorry to ham this up, and I know £750 is a lot of money, but the 25-year-old Bonnehaven, which is permanently available and spectacular, and here, is what, £400? £375? And this yep. is a single cast from 1986, and it's, yeah, that's an incredible price, you know. I've just had the word through from the, the, the people behind the scenes that we could probably run over for another five minutes without getting cut off if anybody wants to talk about the trinkets of Kehar in a bit more detail. So, uh, Brendan and Andrea, I realise I jumped in to cut you off because I thought we were getting cut off. So, please feel free to talk a wee bit about the, the tasting on that or what your thoughts are on that bottle. Well, I, I just love the fact that uh, I love Julianne's challenge to the world of whiskey about stop being a snob because I think that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> um everyone's getting obsessed with you. is this first fill is it first fill is this second fill and you're like come on you got to use all casks but the other thing is now we never know we, we you never know when you lay down spirit you don't know how long you're going to mature it for you need you need to check it you need to sample it you need to see is this one in the moment right now or not but if if julianne was asked to make a whiskey that's going to be 34 years old or whatever age it was going to be it's going to be over 30 years old this is the cast you would pick, isn't it, Julianne? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, if we put something into, like, obviously we've tasted a Marsala cast, for example, tonight. If you put Bonahaven into Marsala for thirty-four years, you're going to lose Bonahaven. You'd be yeah. just drinking a Marsala. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, we use certain casks for for finishing rather than full maturations, and it's all about finding the balance. Um, we weren't being cheap by using a cask that, that was a refill cask. We obviously did it for a reason, not to overpower the Bunnahaven. And obviously it's kind of showcased Bunnahaven for what it is. Bunnahaven's not a one-trick pony. It doesn't always need to be sherried. Yeah, it works beautifully with sherry and it's absolutely phenomenal. And we will always continue to do that. But it's nice to see it in a different light as well. Yeah, yeah, that's Definitely. totally agree. It just works so well. No, it's uh, using, using refill casks and that's something that we did predominantly back in the 80s and uh, Sherry's was, was something, I mean, one of them was, as I said, it was 12 year old, but there was a lot of refill wood and there was a lot of really good refill wood being used back then. And it's not, we had one a couple of years ago, I can't remember what it was, uh, and I remember the cask and it was a second fall out in number seven warehouse, which is no longer there. That's now where Billy's got his nice uh, display of bottles. And uh, the cast sat in there, and it was, uh, I think it was an 11-year-old that was done in a festival. Again, 
it was a refill and it was an absolute cracking whiskey. Um, it just brought out something different. It wasn't completely sherry bombed and it wasn't a bourbon, you know. So these just seem to mellow all the flavours together a wee bit better on these older casks, especially on older casks. You get all these great flavours coming through the bottom of them. And you get my chocolate bananas. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan's put in a comment there at saying, I think using a refill cask is a sign of confidence. To me, it says you stand behind your spirit. And it is a bit about that, but it's also, as we said, about like the marsala for that long. It's about balancing the flavour of the wood and the flavour of the spirit so that you complement both rather than overwhelming one or the other. Morgan's totally right. Totally right. If you have great spirit, um, you use casks to complement and enhance that. If you have bad spirit, you might try and just, just buy any cash you can to hide it. It is, it is it's a great way to put it. It's a sign of confidence. Yep. Um, just just a word, guys. Be patient. The website appears to have crashed because everyone's jumped on it at the one time. Uh, we'll get it up and running again as soon as we can, but just be patient with us. Um, whiskey takes time, so just... <laughs> Sorry, I've just read the, uh, the, the comment from Russell Fawcett who said he's just named his dog. What's the name of that bottle again, Billy? 34 year old. That's the one. <laughs> this is my dog. What's his dog name? 34. <laughs> I can just see it running, running down the, the street shouting and trying to shout that out. <laughs> I'm but just looking at the there's comments. There's really, there's really good amateur th phonetic attempts at how to say <laughs> they're brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. But I'm just making a note of all the people that are now going on my hit list for saying, say it again, Billy, say it again, because they know I'm going to mess it up, and I'm not doing it. You can pronounce it better than I can. <laughs> and Billy, gaze it one more time. Not bad for a Ouija compared to Anila. Trikit Sikeha. What's that, Trikit Sikeha? Yeah. Very That's nice. Very nice. And I'll find out later um, when I get an email or a message from Sarah and Leah saying that I've actually stuffed it up or that I managed <laughs> to get a pass in basic Gaelic. <laughs> That's why I took French. <laughs> I just took bad. Right. Um, that's basically <laughs> us for this evening, guys. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody uh, who's, who's stayed with us for just over an hour tonight. Uh, thanks for your time. Hope you enjoyed the whiskies. It's been our pleasure to sit here and talk at you for a while. I'd like to thank the guys on the panel here, to Brendan, to Andrew and to Julianne for, for giving up their time to sit here um, and just talk about whiskey for an hour. It's been a pleasure for me to, to be involved in it. Thank you very much. I've learned a lot. And all I can finish with is with my wee remaining dram of Trikit Sikeha is to say, cheers, guys. Stay safe. We'll hope to see you in person next year. Slanger. Slanger. Thank you.